we'll start. Let me let me start with some worship. Um, let's say for about five minutes, and then um, we'll kick from there. So try to for six thirty. All right. Praise the Lord, and good evening mm -hmm. to us all. The Bible says wherever two or three are gathered together. He didn't say whether virtually or online. So he left it as a blank check. So yes, we are meeting online, but the Lord is with us in this meeting and to him be all the glory. And let's just uh, take a moment to thank him for another privilege. We've not had a, a midweek service for some weeks now because of you know the light of crusade that was happening, preparations for that. And you know after the crusade now, we are back um, streaming our service uh, at midweek Monday service. So God has been the one who has kept us. He has been faithful to us. Let us begin to thank him. I say, Father, we give you all the praise. Lord, we honor and adore you. We bless your holy name. We worship and adore you. Praise you, Lord. Uh, let's just take this song to worship his name. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Hallelujah. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Oh, let your glory be above all the be let your glory be above all the let your power let your power be above all the hallelujah let your power be above all the let your presence let your presence be above Holy, yeah. let your presence be your abode. Oh, yeah. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Oh, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord, you are wonderful. You are worthy, you are powerful, you are powerful. You are worthy, O Lord, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O what shall I render it? Unto Jehovah, hey, for he has been so very good to us. What shall we render? What shall we render? Hey, to Jehovah, hallelujah. For he has done so very much for us. Nara 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 na e nara nara e nari kele nari mo nara 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 e nara nara e nari kele nari kele mo Let's just thank God for another privilege to be before him, to come before his presence tonight. Let's ask that the Lord will have mercy upon us and cleanse us from all of our sins in our might.
Uh, let's still be in the attitude of prayer, even as we wait for Brother Henry to come back. Let's just thank the Lord for this day. Let's thank him for how he's kept us, protected us, provided for us. Let's just thank him for... Okay, Brian is here. Uh, you can take over, sir. Uh, thank, you thank you very God. much. Yes, let's just continue to thank God for... Um, and that I was saying that we'll ask the Lord that he will make our hearts good soil tonight. Even the few moments that we have to discuss, it doesn't take 30, you know, one full hour of discussions for God to drop something in our heart that will cause us to hear a rema word that we need for our situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We ask that you speak through each and every one of us tonight, even as we talk, go through your word, and let your name alone be glorified. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Uh, I, apologies for that. I was excited and I hit the table when I was rounding off the worship session and then my LAN cable came out of my computer. So that's why I got disconnected just a little bit. Um, but yes, happy to see everybody here tonight, so this evening. Um, recognize everyone, Sister Pride, Sister Veronica, uh, Zainab, Sister Ife, Sister Faith. But similar, what's going on? It's like his sisters that are many here. Where are the brothers? It is where. Ah, <laughs> ah who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, will you drop a, a a reminder on the group? So happy to see everyone. Let's get into what we have for tonight, so that we keep it, you know, um, uh, keep it to time. As God will help us. Today we're going to be talking about um, following God in uncertainty. Following God in uncertainty and we know times are uncertain I and mean, you hear what happening here here whatever is going on uh at any moment a disease could break out so remember even covid period when um i mean what happened now three weeks of lockdown in the beginning of march 2020 the government said three weeks of lockdown it was like oh okay we still have to manage three weeks you know and then after two weeks they announced an extra was it two or three weeks again and it just kept piling on. You know, so there it seems like so many things that shift up, perhaps even in our own lives as well. We are experiencing uncertainty. We are not sure how things are going. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. You know, if you did mathematics or you know, and you say solve for this, solve for that. There's so many unknowns happening. And today we want to just I believe by the Holy Spirit, we just deliberate on how we can actually follow God even when we feel uncertain. I will be using um, Abraham as, um, you know, a case study, if you will. And this came to mind too, when we're talking about the open heavens of yesterday, where um, that Jill was talking about, you know, the different ways that, you know, blessings that comes and the different ways that we can partner and all of that. Um, you know, one, the first one was partnering with God to advance. And the topic was, you know, yeah, he is a rewarder. You know, and he said the different ways we get rewards or God rewards. Number one was that we can partner with him in advancing the kingdom. But he also talked about that there's reward for obedience. And Abraham was the example that he used. So we're going to look at that case study of Abraham to see how he did it. Um, and, you know, and how we also can do it that God helps us. So uh, we have two Bible texts that we're going to quickly read. Uh, the first is, and I welcome anybody, to, if you are there, you can read for us. Uh, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And then we'll have Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. So if you're there, please, you can read for us. Anyone? Uh, Hebrews 11, 8. Yes. By faith, Abraham, when he was called out, going to a place which he should not, which he should after he I received for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went thank you very much thank you very much anybody in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 4 other than brother Tim Day any of our sisters okay um, perhaps I'll read because of uh, in the interest of time all right. Uh, Genesis 12, verse 1 to 4 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, not Abraham now, Abraham. Remember, God changed his name at a point. He says, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. 
and I will make you, I will, Jesus, God now said, I said Jesus, but Jesus is God. God said, verse 2, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. You can say amen to that. Um, it's, verse 3 says, I will bless those who bless you and whoever causes you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, not necessarily when he heard, maybe it was a day before, he, um, a day after he heard that he set out. Um, maybe it was the same day. Maybe it was a year before. We don't know. He just told us that the time Abraham, Abraham set out, after he had heard from God, he was 75 years old. Okay. So to paint the picture here and set the context, um, you know, I'll first of all ask us, you know, maybe you have any thoughts about this scripture. And then I have two key questions I, I'd like to pose for us to deliberate. But I want us to first of all appreciate, I feel we need to appreciate the level of uncertainty that Abraham had to, you know, deal with. Think about a 75 year old man who has, you know, built all his life around a certain place. I mean, he was on a trip with his father at a point. Um, remember, they were coming from the land of Ur um, as well. Terran, I believe, was his father, right? And he was a on a trip with him, and his father died, and he was in a place, and he had built his whole life. Think about yourself. You, I mean, let's say, wherever you're living in South Africa, I mean, you know where you school, you know where work is, you know where you, are, you, know, you go to shop for your groceries, you know where, how you have built your whole life. And then all of a sudden, the word comes and you have to leave there. Move into a new place. Even let's say, for example, you know where you're traveling to. You're moving to another country. For argument's sake, you're moving to Sweden. You're moving to Netherlands or you're moving to Australia or Canada or US, wherever. And you have no one that you know there. Think about the amount of uncertainty here that you're going to be feeling. Like, what will you do? Where will you, how will you? You know what I mean? You're leaving the familiar. Um, and you're an old person, 75 years old, perhaps waiting that, okay, death will come at any time, right? Uh, so that level of uncertainty that Abraham had to deal with, the amount of shift that had happened in his life, he said, leave your friends, leave your family, leave your support structure, leave everything that you have built your life, everything that has defined you up until now, leave it and come out. That is the level, and we don't have time to really unpack and really dig deep, but that is the level of uncertainty that Abraham had to handle, had to deal with. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verse 8 that God said, go. We didn't tell him where. So imagine you come out of your house and God told you to go, but you don't know where. So you just look, 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 where am I going? And you pick a direction and you just start going. All right. That's the kind of uncertainty um, that Abraham had to deal with. But yet we know to our benefit how that story ended. But it was difficult. We saw the drama that happened. Okay, so the first question that, I mean, Hebrews 11 told us then it was by faith. And that's the emphasis, by faith, he left without knowing where he was going. So we see faith and we see uncertainty. So the first question I want to ask us, and we can think about our own life, is this, it says, what is the relationship between faith and not knowing? Not sister faith now. I'm not talking about sister faith. Though maybe sister faith needs to respond to this question first. But what is the difference between what is the link, link and relationship between faith and not knowing and being uncertain? Right. So do we have any contributions to that? Or you can also give a contribution about something that jumped out to you from the scripture. Anyone? What do you think is the relationship? Yes, bro. I have one. That I, what When you asked your question, the thing that came to my mind was that Bible passage that said, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the uh, evidence of things not found. So I think uh, not knowing is a part of faith because you're trusting God to know how to do it. Like when you pray that God will help you with something, you don't know how he's going to help you. You just know he's going to help you. When Abraham, 
Abraham then Abraham was told by God to go to a promised land that for his people. He just knew God was going to have a land for his people. And so he just went where God told him. His people only got to that land like for three generations and 400 years later, like that's the Israelites that was who got the land. And that was after 400 years of slavery. So it's kind of like he trusted God and that wasn't even meant for him. It was for his future generations. So mm. yeah, I would say that uncertainty is a huge part of it. If you know what's happening, you wouldn't have faith in it. All right. Thank you very much. So if you know what's happening, if you already know, there's no need for faith. So, sorry. Um, so faith is, faith needs that expectation, that uncertainty, you not knowing, being sure about how things might turn out, but believing God. So your faith now is in God who said whatever, um, or promised you that he'll be there for you or he'll answer your prayers, or whatever those promises are. So your faith now is in God, even though you don't know how things turn out. Thank you very much, Kutimune. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sister Pride, do you want to say something? And you, maybe you can reflect on your own life and maybe something that happened previously and you didn't know how. All right. Um, perhaps maybe we'll see then contribute. There's still the opportunity to speak. Anyways, uh, as Brother Tim Lane just mentioned, faith, you know, faith, the Bible says, Another version says, faith gives substance to things hoped for. So, uncertainty, yes, I see a comment. Thank you, Sister Price. He says, I think uncertainty can stimulate your faith. Excellent. Uncertainty can stimulate your faith. So, without, um, without things that make you uncertain, right, there, there is no opportunity for faith to grow or for faith to find expression, all right? And perhaps maybe if you already know how things are going to set, how things are going to happen, maybe you are, you, are, you are thinking too small. Maybe you are planning too small. Maybe you are praying too small. If you are sure of how things are going to turn out, you are so certain. Maybe you are praying too small. You are not trusting God or you are depending on yourself. And often sometimes we can depend on ourselves thinking, oh, no, I can do this, you know, so there's no need to. But when there's something, a mountain so big, a plan so big, a vision so big, maybe even a challenge so big, right, your faith then stirs up. It reminds me of the story of Hannah, right? Hannah was comfortable. Uh, you read the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1 and chapter 2, there about. Anna was very comfortable. There was no problem. Uh, even her husband was not bothering her. That's, uh, where is my child? Uh, he didn't bother at all. Even when she was crying, eventually, the Bible says that God used Penina, who was the other wife, and was she was giving birth like you no know, machine. Um, and God used that to provoke Hannah. So Anna got to the place where she couldn't take it anymore. She started crying. And Anna husband asked, ah, Am I not better to you than 10 sons? You know, and she, she said, No, it's not the same thing. You know, and God used that to provoke her, and she went into the place of prayer to pray. That as I mean, that issue then stimulated her faith, you know. Uh, eventually, and she dedicated Samuel. And remember, God was also looking for a prophet at that point in time. So, as she dedicated Samuel, God got what he needed. And she only asked for one, but she had, I think it was five more children, even after Samuel. So, God can use those circumstances. Think about your own lives now, where there are issues and thinking as if things are, I mean, do you know? Perhaps God is using that to stimulate your faith so that you can seek his face, so that you can trust him for something better, so that you can move forward. Thank you very much for that contribution. Anyone else? All right. Yes. So, yes, Sister Veronica, please go ahead. Oh, was that? Oh, that was that. You were clapping, all right. <laughs> I think I thought it was a hand. All right, but it was good to hear your voice. Thank you very much. All right. So in essence, so that we can move on to the next question. In essence, uncertainty is the environment in which faith thrives. Think about it. 
you know that if you grab your car key, you put it in the ignition, you turn it, then you come up. At least that's I mean, the battery and everything, all that things considered. Or maybe yours is sophisticated, is voice activated, or you push um, a button, the car will kick. So you are sure about that. Okay, you don't need faith. Uh, when you boil water, for example, that uh, the water will boil. I be, I'm believing God that when I put this water, it will boil. No, right. So, but when issues arise and you're uncertain, that is the environment where faith thrives. And the greater the uncertainty, the greater the possibilities. All right. So, the more impossible the situation, the more glory God can get out of it. And so, faith thrives. Faith thrives. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Okay, so let's move on to the next question, which is where we'll use to wrap up today. Is Question number two is, why is it difficult to follow God when we're uncertain? And you can think of this question, this next question as an addition. What are the human tendencies that limit our, our ability to follow God? What are the human tendencies that limit our ability to follow God? when we're uncertain, of course. Any contributions? I'm going to start calling him, so. Um, okay. Um, one um, um, factor is that we want to see something to believe it, or we at mm. least want a sign. We, mm. even if God calls us or tells us to do something, just like Gideon, we want to say, um, you know, give me a sign. Show me that I'm on the right path. Even mm. if you are where God wants you to be, you sort of want him to maybe wink at you or show you, yes, yes, that's it. Keep going. So I think the scene is believing is one and the desire to have constant visible confirmations mm. yeah mm. thank you very much um so perhaps okay let me know so we don't deviate or digress but thank you very much for that um yes we seeing is believing and uh, like jesus christ told thomas blessed are those uh you you believe because you have seen but blessed are those who believe though they have not seen yeah um but hold that thought for now is it uh, Brotimine, yes, please go ahead. Uh, another thing that impedes us with our faith is that you can't trust someone you don't know. And a lot of people mm. don't really know God well enough to have faith in him. Like, for instance, people who are new Christians who are just starting out in their faith, they don't really know God. So they don't know the God that we're asking them to have faith in. So when they mm -hmm. read their Bible and pray and meditate on the word and get closer to God, they are, they can have more faith in him because they now know the God that they have faith in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So trust and faith is a function of relationship. And the strength of the faith, the strength of the trust is built on the strength of the person who's going to deliver. So if you know that the person has the capacity, right? If a billionaire promises you 10,000 rands, for example, you, you are not happy. I mean, you know that the person is very capable of that, right? So it's a function of relationship. And perhaps you're also not thinking, ah, but this person, you know, if this person doesn't deliver, what are you going to do? So doubt begins to set in when it seems like when um, we don't really haven't come to have an experience with God that is so strong that we know as um, that he is not someone who you know, will deceive us or will promise and not deliver on his promises or is not able to do what he has promised. So, but thank you very much for that uh, thought. Trust is built and faith is built on relationship, the strength of the relationship. Any other contributions? All right, I see a comment in the chat. Uh, let's see. Sister Pride says, we all tend to expect things to unfold in a certain way. Okay. But sometimes life throws us curveballs. Okay. And events don't go according to plan. And we add to that. I'm sure many of us can already, <laughs> you know, see how that is. It says it can be challenging to adapt when things don't follow our expectations. 
Thank you. That's a very good, you know, very great um, remark there. Um, you know, we pray and then we have a, a way, like someone was talking about Naaman. Naaman, when he came and then, uh, what's his name, like Elisha told Gehazi to go and tell him to dip in the pool, you know, in, in the River Jordan, dip seven times. And Naaman said, I thought he will come out. He will lay hands on me. He will do this. He will call upon his God. And then I will be. And sometimes we do it like that. We have a plan. We have a plan. And um, we want to be certain that things go according to that plan. In one year, I will be here. You know the plans we made now. Uh, we said, ah, when I'm when I'm 23, I already have so, 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 and so. Then I'm 25, I'll have my house. Then I'm 26, I'll have three children already. And they went on this and that. You know, you know those plans. Uh, how many of them have happened the way you thought it was going to happen? All right, so it doesn't always happen uh, that way. I see someone is in a fist. It's true, right? God, someone said, you know that joke now. I said, um, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him what you have planned. You know, what you have planned for yourself. That Lord, this is, you know, and then God will just laugh as well. Right, so these things happen. But we have the we need to be able to flexible to trust God and trust the time that He makes something beautiful in His time. Any other contributions? Thank you. Um, yes, I think uh, lack of patience. Sometimes we lack patience, and um, I'm I'm seeing this verse we just read now, when the Lord instructed Abraham to leave his family and move to a different place. He didn't give him a timeline. Mm -hmm. And I think for him to get to a place where God wanted him to be or where God had destined for him to be, it took patience. And yeah, I think we can exercise more patience, a little bit more patience. Let's do some again. Thank you very much, Mr. Veronica. That is so excellent. Um, we tend to be impatient with God. And God, we think God works on our own timeline. And that's not the case. You know, he he has his own frame, time frame and timeline, you know. Um, and the sad thing is sometimes when things don't happen as quickly as we would, we love them to and we feel is right for it to happen. We sometimes take matters into our own hands and we see what happened with Sarah, recommending that. Uh, and we don't have time to go in through to that. If that's Genesis chapter 16, thereabouts, right? Um, she said that. It's like God has stopped us from me. I can't have, you know, so why not go to Hagar? And we see what became of that. So when we're impatient with God, uh, it then becomes a problem, especially when we want to take matters into our own hand. As it is, quote unquote, to help God. It's like God is not getting it on time, you know? So let's let's just facilitate this process or fast track it. And often God is actually working on us through those seasons uh, of waiting, developing our character, and developing developing the place He wants us to be, so that by the time we get to the place, both we and the place are ready. You see, um, so. Yes, we didn't really need to be more patient. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else before I conclude with a um, um, few thoughts here? What are the tendencies? For those who just joined, thank you very much. Uh, we are looking at the subject. Uh, the topic is following God in uncertainty. Um, looking at Abraham when God called him and how things were uncertain. Hebrews 11, 8 says that Abraham you know, went out and left and moved, even though he didn't know where he was going, right? So, um, but we know how his story ended, all right? So the question we are deliberating now is that what are the human tendencies that cause us to, you know, to that limits our ability to follow God in uncertainty, you know? What makes it difficult for us to follow God when we are uncertain? I've heard a number of contributions already. All right, Sister Pride is also adding, I can also add comparison to the lack of patience. Yes, seeing other people in their harvest might make you want to start eating your seeds. Fantastic. In fact, I would have said everybody should give Sister, Sister Pride as well a round of applause, you know. It's, that's the truth. 
and it's more even, even more thank you mr Malagani. it's more complicated now especially um you know and okay no bias we are clapping for everybody that has contributed <laughs> you know uh, you go on instagram you see your friend he just maybe bought a car he's married he has a running business you know and whatever and everybody's posting you know their successes and their highs uh, their hikes and their harvest um, and some may actually even be doing it in a good uh, without any you know uh, evil intention sorry about this we have the there's a uh, what's it called motion sensor so I, and I'm sitting very still okay so those are part of the um, that's a challenge now you see this person moving in this person making progress and it feels like you're being left behind. All of us, if we are going to be honest, have had that feeling. And if we are very honest, even me myself now, the aspect of my life, I'm looking and say, Lord, you know, and I'm sure if we can think about it too, we compare ourselves. Um, and yet the Bible tells us that they comparing um, themselves with themselves and measuring themselves against themselves, they are not wise. And why? Because we have different timelines. It's easy to say. Yeah, it's very difficult to also hold on to that truth, though, right? We know it inherently that we are not running. Everybody's not running on the same clock. We don't have the same story, right? Um, and the way God moves people is different. If you look at Joseph, for example, if he had mates that they were in school together, right? Um, when he was captured and sold into slavery, his friends would have continued in high school or got to gone into university, continued making progress. Think about him in Portugal's house living away. Think about him in the prison thinking about, ah, sorry, my, my, my friends now, maybe they've got to marry. Maybe they have a nice job, a nice house, whatever, whatever. But when his time came, everything, he got he a got job and got a wife same day, <laughs> right? He got a job, he got a house, he got a position, he got a, a ride. I remember they asked him to ride around in chariots. He got new clothes. He got everything on the same day. So God moves us differently. And we need that faith to be able to trust him, even when it seems like things are not adding up. Two plus two is not looking like four. You know, we need to be able to trust him. Thank you very much for that. Maybe one final comment. We're already over. It's already 6.33, but I believe we are getting value for our time. We'll wrap up very soon just now. Any other comments? There's some people who have not heard their voice at all. Anybody? Mr. Zainab. Um, Safi has spoken. All right. Okay. Uh, let me then just continue. If you have any comments as well, we can always keep, um, keep it flowing in the chats. Okay. So we've already talked about this a little bit when we're talking about the tendencies. There are two main ones that I wanted to really highlight. I thought... Um, I believe we may have to highlight tonight. So the first is that desire to know. God really has placed the desire in us to be certain about things. If you are not certain about certain, you know, about um, some steps, you wouldn't take them, um, you know. So there is a measure of certainty that's needed in life, right? I mean, if everything is just uncertain, I mean, anxiety and all kinds of issues then come into play, right? Um, so we need some measure of certainty. You need to know that you are unconditionally loved. That needs to be certain. For example, you need to know Jesus is the son of God. He died for your sins. That needs to be certain in your heart. There's no question about it. You need to know if you have a partner, for example, that the person loves you. Um, you need to know that there is some certainty knowing that if you study and put in the best with God's message on your life, you're able to succeed. Um, if you take certain steps, you know, things like that, there is some measure of uncertainty. But when the desire then moves so strongly that it moves to the point where we want to be sure how, we want to know when, we want to know. And I think that's the little difference between, um, as Sister Ife mentioned, in the case of Gideon. Gideon wanted to be certain that God was calling him to that. Okay. Um, he wanted to be certain that it was really God that was calling before he took that step. It was a very serious step. Remember, he said, I'm the least in my father's house. My father's house is the least in our clan. Our clan is the least in our tribe. Our tribe is the least in Israel. So, so many things against him. But when the word came, the angel came and told him, that man of valor, he said, what's the meaning of this? I need confirmation. And he said, he did it twice, right? Um, he first said, oh, let's 
you put something clothes, let's say for example, put a cloth and say, let it rain on this cloth and not rain around. Slept the night, he woke up, that place was wet, around it was dry. He said, I'm not sure, I need another one. Let it rain around and let this cloth be dry. And God still answered him. If it was a sin, God wouldn't have done it, uh, um, responded to him in that way. But God wanted him to have that conviction in his heart that yes, I am the one who is calling you. But remember now when he took 30 something thousand people to go and fight and God said, these people are too much. We have to delete some. Okay. He brought it down to 300. Gideon did now say, Lord, I need to know and be sure that this 300 we are going to win. Give me No. He went with it. He went with it. He went to survey the land. God even told him, oh, go and hear what they are saying about you. All right. So Sometimes, yes, we want to have conviction in us that, yes, it is God that is really promised. This is what God is really promising me for my life. This is what God is really saying. We need that conviction. But the how, the details, God is very, very rarely gives details. Look at when he asked Abraham to go and um, uh, sacrifice Isaac. God didn't tell him that a ram is coming on the other side. No, he didn't. He didn't even tell him there. He said, you know it when you see it. He traveled for three days and saw a mountain. And then he said, oh, yes, that's the mountain. And he went there. And then eventually, when he, before he killed, he said, oh, stop your hand, stay your hand. Right? There's a ram in the thicket. So when Abraham was coming this way, the ram was coming here. So I'd like to use this to encourage us that, yes, you might be uncertain coming up this way, but trust God that they are, he already has a plan. You might not know how things are going to come. Pan out. But there's so much that is happening outside of your ability to perceive that God really has. I mean, you have testimonies of that if you think about your life. The way God just surprised you. He has been planning it all before. He didn't just tell you. And often he doesn't tell us like that. Right? So we need to be able to trust God that when we are coming up, the ram is also coming up. And when we get to where we need to be, it will be there waiting for us, ready for us. Hallelujah. So we need to um, not hold God down to a how, hold God down to a when. Sometimes things are being delayed and we need to push in the place of prayer, right? But we need to have that faith in God. Um, and then this leads to the second point, in which I'll use this to wrap up. The enemy, what the enemy often does is that he tries to make us suspicious of God as human beings. We are suspicious. We are, and sometimes we even inherently are suspicious of God. We, are, we question his his love towards us. We question whether or not he will give us what we are, whether we are deserving. So many different issues. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, that is when the enemy was speaking to Eve, was telling her, how far? Uh, did God say you should not eat this fruit? She said, ah, God said you should not eat the fruit. Oh. If you eat of it, you will surely, if you touch it, you will surely die. And uh, God said, the enemy said, ah, it's a lie. He actually is because is because he doesn't want you to be like him, knowing good and evil. Who were they already like before? The Bible tells us in John 20, um, Genesis 2, verse 18, that God made man in his own image after his own likeness. But he was able to convince them to be suspicious of God. And so they disobeyed being suspicious. You know, and I reflect on my own life in this, and I'm sure we can reflect on our own lives in this and see areas where we're like, ah, say God can really do this thing for me. And then we take matters into our own right, but we are suspicious, and then doubt begins to creep in, begins to creep in, all right? So we have to guide against, we have to be able to trust God wholeheartedly, and know, God said in John 28, in Jeremiah 28, verse 11, I believe, he says, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, they are thoughts of good, and not of evil, to give you a hope, to give you a future. Another version says, to give you an expected end. If you look at Paul often was talking about predestination, God has finished our lives. He has completed it before the foundations of the world. He has completed it already. Everything we will ever need is like a project, any building project. You have to take inventory. We will need uh, this amount of concrete. We will need this amount of, this is the plan. This is the design. It's going to be in this place. We're going to need this. Or any project, we'll make a budget. If you are doing anniversary now, right? Or when we did programs. We make a budget. Oh, we need this amount of food for this many people. We're going to move from year to year. He has already done all that planning for our lives. All we need to be able to do is to trust in him and trust in his message and trust in his faithfulness and not let us become suspicious of him. 
but trust in his heart towards you. And I believe the word is for someone, for me, for you, to trust him wholeheartedly. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So wrapping up, we need the courage to believe that where God is calling you to is way better than where he's calling you from. Verse 2, uh, Genesis 12, verse 2 to 3, God gave him promises. I will make of you a great nation. I will make this. In fact, the promises we are going to we're, we're going to outlast him. He says, Your children will be in his spirit, but I will bring them out. And I realized one day, I said, ah, God kept his promise to a dead man. Abraham had died hundreds of years. God had no obligation. But yet, because he gave that word, he kept his promise to that one. To that Even when Moses was running around doing any harm in the wilderness, right? God had to go and look for him because he was the one he wanted to use. God kept his promise to a dead man. How much more you who he loves and you are alive, right? He definitely will keep his promise to you. So we have to have that courage and believe that wherever God is taking us to, no matter how uncertain and how the road looks, all the factors that we don't know that are at play, let us trust that um, what he's calling us to is way better, way, 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 way better. Conclusion, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, the Bible tells us that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Um, has he said it? Shall he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? I want to read another verse. It says, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. It says, does he speak and then not act? Act? Does he promise and not fulfill? What has God promised you? What promises has he spoken to you at night? Lean there on your bed, maybe with tears in your eyes, on your own. Um, but you wake up and clean it and smile and all of that. What has he spoken to you while you were praying? Maybe while you were even doing the dishes, it seems like a thought was coming into your heart. I had an imagination of what your life could look like. Way better than what it is right now. Or whatever it is you're trusting God for. Maybe fees that need to be paid. And you're like, how will it come out? What has this, what has he tried to reassure you? He definitely will come through for you. And he'll come through for me. And he'll come through for all of us. He'll come through for his church. And the name of the Lord will be glorified in the name of Jesus. I hope we have been blessed by this, um, you know, midweek service and the topic like we've discussed, following God in uncertainty. Perhaps you are watching, and I'm saying this now. Thank you, Sister Veronica. For those who may be watching the recording somewhere, God has a reassuring word for you. He will come through for you. Just trust, trust him. Don't be suspicious and don't be overly worried about how it will happen. All right? It will happen and he will make it so. Let's just bow our heads wherever we are and say the word of, say the word of prayer. You know, to seal this, believe in God and say, Father, I thank you for your word that has come to me tonight. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. I receive this word. I choose to trust you wherever I be suspicious of you, you know, suspicious of your character. You know, sometimes when people pray, you were like, oh, when do you want to talk about me? She said, ah, God should send you to one country like this. And we always speak about maybe a country that there's a war going on or country that is. And sometimes it's like as if we are inherently suspicious of you, that he does the best for us. And that's a lie. He's our maker. He's our father. He's our daddy. He wants the best for us. Thank you for the word tonight. And trust and say, Father, I trust you. I trust you. I know that you are a God that doesn't fail. And I thank you in advance that you're coming through for me. You're coming through for me. And you can make mention of the specific circumstance. I don't know what it is that is worried. What may have been giving you worry the past few uh, months. Yes, May is coming to an end. We're almost halfway through the year. I are thinking, 2024, what have I accomplished? Where have I been? And as um, Sister Pride mentioned, you know, we're looking around, seeing our friends, maybe seeing other people making progress. I think it was happening, you know. But yet, let's thank him in advance. I say, Lord, I know. I know. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know. And we know. Go. The Bible says he will do a new thing. He gives us a hint. So he says you do a new thing. And it will spring forth. It will spring forth. It will be sudden. It will just happen. And you wonder, ah, is this how God works? Yes, yes, yes. This is how it works. He will do it suddenly. And you will share your testimony. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Lord, we thank you and we use this opportunity to commit ourselves into your hand, O Lord. 
We thank you for your word that has come, come to us tonight, following you in uncertainty. Lord, the uncertainties can really bear at our hearts and really pull our hearts. And sometimes we get depressed, sometimes we get down, we feel down. We are not even able to take the actions we ought to take. Sometimes it's difficult to even pray or to praise you. Lord, we ask for your enablement. We thank you because your word says that you understand that we are human. We receive grace, O Lord, and we receive testimonies. We receive encouragement from you. And we receive answers to our prayers, O Lord. And we will testify. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. We commit the rest of the week into your hand. This week, Father, we receive our testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will come to church on Sunday with bountiful testimonies according to your message, O God. Blessed be your holy name. Give us good sleep tonight. Give us good rest. For our studies, O Lord, of those working businesses, breathe upon it, breathe upon our minds, help us to be fruitful in life and take us higher. And let your name be glorified. I will pray this prayer as well for everyone who was not able to join us tonight. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Believe Amen. We, have, we, have, we got value for our time. Yes, we are 17 minutes of our time. So, but I believe we got value for it. Amen. Um, yes, but to me, what yeah. you Thank you, Brother Henry, for the ministration given unto us. May God bless you and fill you with what you've emptied out unto us in Jesus' name. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here with us. We thank you because we know that you've taken time out of your day to just come and be together as we just discuss with each other, and we appreciate it. And for our announcements, uh, as we've discussed now our june thanksgiving service is this sunday and we are going to be thanking god for how he has brought us this thus far taking us to the sixth month of the year so just come bring your dancing shoes and be ready to celebrate and thank the lord for it all uh the prayer department meets every wednesday for prayer from 10 to 11 so if you want to be a part of our prayer just reach at the state to new and she will get you in touch with it and evangelism is every saturday at two o'clock you can just meet at the church and we can just come and do the great commission the lord has called us for to go into the world and preach the gospel so let's all just strive to come there and as we do the words lord's work that the lord will bless us the more in jesus name and that is all the announcements. So let us say the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, the love, love of, of God, God, and the and fellowship God, of the Holy Jesus Spirit be with us, us now and, and forevermore. Amen. 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 Surely sure. goodness and mercy yes, shall yes. follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Again, thank you all for coming. Have a glorious week and God bless you.